So with our European disappointment behind us, we turn our attention back to the league, which is technically our main priority, that and signing a centre-back. More on that in a second. But today, we figure out if the new boys are actually going to be good enough to sustain a title challenge, and whether we can sign a centre-back just to boost the squad up a little bit. As always, if you have been enjoying the series, drop a like. That would be most fantastically helpful and all that lovely jazz to go alongside it. So yes, I mentioned centre-backs. Uh, let's talk, because I think I may have solved our problem. So we've obviously had a week off between the last games, and I was looking through centre-back options for signings, and I decided to take a sweet little punt on a little man here called Roberto Vélez, who you might remember of this parish previously. The difference is now we can actually register the bastard. The simple reason I went for him is because he's a free signing, essentially. A free loan for the full season. You'll notice we've got him till December. It's all kind of sewn up. Uh, he's solid. He's nothing spectacular, but that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted a solid backup centre-back that we could register for things, and is all good. He's also got 18 jumping reach and is six foot five, so he's a beast in the air. So, if he has to come in for someone like Thomas Blad, he'll do a fantastic job in that role, I would like to think. So, and technically, he could even cover wing back in central midfield. Not that I'd want him to, but he can do the job. And so, for us paying none of his wages for the full season to sign a player like this, I felt that was the best course of action. And in slightly other news, uh, Moise Kipre now actually has five-star potential, apparently, but he's also now missed another training session. Uh, the man is basically not getting paid at the moment because he keeps getting two-week fines every time he does this. So he's earning like half the amount of money that he should be. And I'm fine with that. It means we're basically paying him 1500 quid a week. But the other thing about him is I noticed this, labelled the next Frank Kessie. Um, that's new. So I noticed it when he got fined that it said the media have dubbed him the next Frank Kessie. And I was like, well, okay then. Uh, maybe we've actually signed an absolute monster here. And well, for the price, I'm starting to think this might be a better deal if he actually plays games and turns up occasionally. He could be great. But today we're away against Storms. Now they are second from bottom, but that doesn't, you can't really read too much into that given we've only had one game this season. And we were very fortunate to win, let alone by four goals to nil. But it was nice to see that we actually overperformed in that sense. And I'd like to see if we can continue that this year. This year, I want level pegging or better in terms of goal scored to predicted xg that's what we're going for and as for the team well we've had a full week off this is doing that shit again um that's the team i want to go with honestly I i'm fine with this lineup with the exception of moving velez onto the bench uh, and also reading and two actually now that i think about it solskjaer that will give us a nice little few options in all the different positions but i like this team I like the lineup. I like our front line, especially. They look fantastic. Uh, Indistad already has a hat trick on the board this season. Maybe this is the year that he really is a breakout star for us. And Kawamoto, if he just keeps plugging away and scoring goals, he'll do the job for me. I honestly do wonder, though, if teams are going to focus more on Kawamoto because of his sheer quality and whether that will free up more space for someone like Indistad. Now, that could be completely... You know, it's a, it's a sample size of one, having seen that last game. But you just never know. I just want Kawamoto to be... A, I mean, I just want him to value his... I want him to prove valuable to us this season and actually value that transfer fee because it was a lot and the wages are a lot too. I feel like once Kawamoto settles in, builds those links, he can make a hell of a season out of himself this year. Gulstorf, ball downfield. Lovely work. Really good from Kipre. Getting on that quickly. Kornich already booked inside eight minutes. That could be a problem for us this year. Indistad. Oh, nice idea though. Strokes have actually started fairly well tonight, so we've got to be careful. But Bamba in there brilliantly. Kawamoto out wide. Bamba's making the run back. There's Bamba. Oh, it's actually got on target. Do it again. Kawamoto! And it's a good save. Really good stop. Kawamoto made the great run. Right position. Should have been 1-0. Lots of bodies to aim for. Can he pick one out? He can. Indistad! It's not a good header. No one made the, quite the right run for him. Cornish's ball in. Bamba! I don't understand. Got to move that ball a bit quicker here. Indistad. Out wide for Dira. Now we've got a chance. He has to put this across. Somebody needs to get into a good position to shoot here. Back for Rakic. There's nobody there. Cornish! What a save from Gulstorf. Well, um, I think we've been the better side in this first half. The chance is there. The possession's still there too. At times, it feels like we need to move the ball a little bit quicker. And that might be something we'll look to do in the second half. It looked like there was a few moments where we could have unsettled Strom's set with slightly faster passing and a higher tempo play. And he just didn't take advantage of it. Usually that's okay. But in this game, at 0-0, with us in control the way we are, I feel like this is a chance for us to up that tempo a little bit and try to get that lead so we can then revert back and just sit on the game. This is more like it. Nice little one-touch stuff. Bamba's in behind. He's got a great first touch. Bamba! Oh my god, he's missed again. Back for Dida. Round the side for Rakic. Jesse Rakic! Good save again. Incredible. It's really good patient build-up. But it's just a little bit speedier. Kornich. Indistad. Round the side for Rakic. He's through on goal, you know. Jesse Rakic! Good effort. Kornich. To Rakic. Keeper. Oh, what a bit of football. This is gorgeous. Rakic! Bamba! Somebody shoot, for the love of Christ. I mean, 90th minute, and it looks like it's going to be a nil-nil draw here. And I feel like we've kind of done everything we can in this game. Uh, the change we've made in the second half made us a lot better, but just can't take the chances, and I just don't know anymore. Reading them. Maybe we can win one late. Reading them's ball in. 
flicked over and it's wide. Three seconds left here. Unless we really hurry our asses up here, I don't see anything coming of this. Vedigerna. Indistad. Kawamoto. Maybe. Oh, good block. And that's it. Strom's going to set nil. Tromsø nil. Uh, second half, we absolutely deadened them and had way more chances, but... I don't know. A lot of them did fall to players that perhaps... I mean, then again, Bamba should still be scoring goals. I mean, how many chances do you need at this point? Um, now, obviously, we had a bit of fortune in the first game, so it does kind of bounce out at the moment. But it is just yet more games where we play well and we don't win, and we play crap and we do win. Can we just have it go nice for once? Please, just for a little bit. So we do remain top of the league, virtue of our goal difference. But the thing is, we should be winning this. We should be on six points right now. And if you're going to win tiles, you can't drop points against teams like Storm's going to in these sort of situations. That's uh, still no goals conceded yet this season. So that is a good sign, at least. Uh, defensively, very, very stable. But which is going to be useful because it means we're going to have to scrape out some one nils this year, I feel like, since that seems to be the only way we can score. It's it's weird. It's two games, I realize. But I have a horrible feeling by the end of this episode, we're going to be talking about the exact same thing again. It's happened. Matthias Jonsson has been called up for the Norway squad. That's incredible. He's still only 17 and he's just been called up for his first ever senior call up at 17. Incredible. I don't know if he'll actually get a cap because that match fix is in front of him, but you never know. We struggle to find these sort of passes. Here we go. Better. Indistad. Kawamoto. He's on the right side of the defender. Sets himself up. Kawamoto. One last chance, perhaps, for the guys. It's a penalty. It is a penalty. And Vedegerda has just come off the bench, now has a chance to potentially win what could be a massive game in the title race and make up for that Kawamoto miss. Vedegerda from the spot. And yeah. And it's off the bar and over the line by Jonas Lewistein directly from the corner after the penalty. It's 1-0 Tromsø. And that's how we have to score, apparently. But it doesn't matter because we'll take it. My goodness me. Just hang on for once. We haven't conceded a goal yet this season. Don't let it happen now. Unbelievable. Thomas Blad has just saved a goal. Like, he's just made a save there with his bot. I can't believe that's not gone in, honestly. That late Thomas Blad block has just won us a football match. Uh, we missed the penalty. We have the chipped chance for Kalmoto, which hits the post, because of course, we missed the penalty, score from the corner with an open goal, because that's apparently the only way we can score. And then Johansson fluffs his lines and Blad has to put in a goal-saving block in the... Look at the... The XG on that chance. Huge tackle from him as we beat Mulder at home. That is massive for the title race, but goodness me, we made that difficult. But we did get the result in the end. So I suppose there's that, but still underperforming. That said, we've not conceded a goal in the league yet this season, and we definitely should have done. So I suppose there's that too. It's averaging it out at the moment, I'd say. I'm really happy with that. We're still seemingly managing to miss virtually every chance we get, but also we're keeping out our opponents by an above average amount of points as well so we do go top of the league still five plus five goal difference as well uh really strong start for us there and to beat Mulder in there to beat Mulder and Bodder in those first few matches and not concede a goal in our first three is very good news Johansson actually got his first cap they actually put him in the team he's played for Norway already incredible what a career this lad could potentially have <laughs> Easily one of the best use prospects I've ever had on FM, to be honest. Okay, well, it was a little bit more than that, in fact, because Stalas Solberg and put all three of our guys into the team. Lewis Dean, Johansson, and Indistad all got their first caps in the same game. So it's next gen. And I don't tend to normally focus on next gen because most of the time it's not really that relevant to us. Except this year where it's extremely relevant because we've got five fucking players in it. There's the Turkish Delict in there and the next Eric Torstved. But we have five guys. Fifth place, Mateusz Johansson. 18th place, Kawamoto. 20th place, Lewistein. 30th place, Kipre. And 40th place, Tikkunen made it on there as well. This is... I've never had five players, I don't think, on a next-gen list. And the fact that two of them have actually come through our youth academy. This is incredible scenes. And by the way, it's Johansson that's now considered the next Eric Torstved. Auckland. Ball in. Flip to what? 1-0 to odds. Their first opening of the match. <laughs> oh, my God. Bamber again. Looking over the top for Kawamoto. Nice work. He's got support. Might go alone here. Might have to go alone here. Oh, what a strike. Those ones go in, though. Koki Kawamoto, one all. What an absolute screamer from the young Japanese striker. Happy to celebrate that next-gen inclusion. Look at that. Kivrak. Kivrak's actually a player I looked at in the window as a potential wing-back option. He was just too expensive. They wanted, like, six million pounds from Solbakken. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Reedingen now. Better work from us, though. Reedingen. So it's through for Bamba. Round the side for Kawamoto! And it's a great finish from Koki Kawamoto. That's more like it. Two all. Trump's to find the level. And at least Kawamoto started to hit a few goals today. Uh, we really needed that from him. But we've got to keep pushing. Knocked away. Reading and brings it down. This is better. 
Oh, Steinberg Johansson. Rakic, round the side. Kawamoto for the hat trick. Can he do it? Koki Kawamoto! Yes! Tromsa three, odds two, and it's a hat trick for the Japanese striker. And this is more like it from the young man. What a goal! Just chill, lads. Nobody doing anything silly here. Bamba, unless he fancies another pass. Kawamoto's in again, and it's four. It's four to Koki Kawamoto with all four goals. Okay, this man might have finally found his sight for the club a little bit now. Odds two, Thromsa four. We were, we were a goal down with like 10 minutes left here. Well, there we go. Odds two, Thromsa four. Four. And I think in the end, again, we thoroughly deserved the win. It was just mental how long it took us. It took us until, what, the 87th minute to equalize, then the 88th and 93rd. Kawamoto had another chance clear through in the 95th. He could have had five goals today, but what a performance from the young man. That is more like it. That's what I want to see from us a little bit more often. We were taking our chances. Oh my God. Still took 3xG, but never mind. We got the result. And we do actually not go top because Starbeck had a thumping 6 3 victory. Oh, wait, it's the Nurmska set, a team we couldn't score against but nevertheless we've got a plus seven goal difference already another four goals being scored to see kawamoto grab four goals tonight as well this is a very good sign the fact that he's really starting to score some goals now i think that's what six for the season already now and i think you've only played six matches or seven as it goes uh that's a bit more like it finally uh now we just need to be consistently doing that we seem to have these weird games where we'll blast away but then too many games where we can't quite do it just spread it out a bit chaps yeah so <laughs> Just another nil-nil in which we have nearly two goals worth. We seem to be really good in like one game and then it just seems to just flap. And today is just another example of us not winning matches we should win. And yeah, Berger Hansen did do very well off the bench, but we're still top of the league, which is good, but it's very tight. And the problem is we just have so many games. We, we have these games where we just let off the leash and we'll go mental on teams. But too many matches where we play almost as well as that and just fail to take any chances. And today it's the second time this season already that we've had a nil-nil like this. But that is at least... Um, only one game in which we've conceded a goal this season, but that's two matches we could have won. And, you know, with those five, four points we've dropped from those games, we could be on 15 points right now and sitting pretty. Uh, we're definitely having a... What I would say, though, is we definitely look a lot better than last season in general, and I'm hoping that that might actually be enough over the course of a full season to see us through statistically. Because last year, we were like the fourth best team in the league. This year, we actually do look like the best team in the division, and that's a big step for us. So hopefully that alone can get us more chances over the year. Relatively routine victory in the cup, but I mean, we obviously smashed them with the rotators side but four of the five goals were from set pieces two corners and two free kicks all of which were assisted by Bosch Grevink uh got four assists and 17 key passes in this match what a god he basically ran the show for us but there was an injury in this game to Berger Hansen and I'm worried about um the potentials for that one so concerning we'll have to see Ooh, three to four weeks for Steinberger Hansen not really what we needed because he is basically our third choice striker at times and does a great job when he comes in so that's a shame this is legit impressive we're now 29 games unbeaten in the cup, which is actually a record for this cup itself, uh, because I assume that means us going out on penalties before doesn't count as a defeat. So 29 matches in the Norwegian Cup since we last lost a match in normal time. That is mental. Just to clarify, this is the game. Sarpsborg, um, June 2026. It's been nearly six years since Tromsø lost a cup match in normal time. Um, we've not lost a single cup game since I got over, got here in normal time. Anyway, we got knocked out on penalties in one. And that's it. But yeah, that's incredible. 29 matches. Kipre has really screwed us now. He's actually not turned up for a league game because he was leaving a bar. This guy is an absolute joke of a player. We're going to have to get his attitude in check. Cornish to Jonsson. Solid start from us. What a ball that is. Kawamoto! Oh, it's in. It's just in. Hey! Christensen nil. Tromsa one and Kawamoto with a brilliant header. Not what you'd expect from a striker of his uh, sort of aerial ability, but what a header. Tons of options to aim for. Has to pick out one of them. In to start, Kawamoto, and it's 2-0. And Koki Kawamoto grabs himself another goal. Eight goals for this year. He still has inconsistent patches, but he does just seem to score more often than any other striker we've ever had. We get four guys in the box for every single chance now, basically. And a guy sitting on the corner of the box, which is Jonsson. Whips it all the way through. Ridningen! And Kawamoto's on the end of it, and it's another hat-trick for Koki Kawamoto. 3-0 uh, to Tromsa. When he scores, he scores in bunches. Nine goals this year already for the young man. I would like another clean sheet, though, for Johansson's goodness. Rekic and Kawamoto. Is there an overlapping run? Maybe Bamba. Indistad. Maybe pull it back through. It's Kawamoto in again. <laughs> He's done it again. It's his 10th goal of the year and his second four-goal haul of the season. 4-0 to Tromsa. When he turns up, boy, does he turn up. Well, there we go. Christensen nil. Tromsa four. Koki Kawamoto scores another four goals in a game. That's the second time this season he's banged four in a match. Okay. 
I think we might finally have a striker that can take some chances for us. He still missed a few, but now I'm starting to see that consistently over time, it feels like he's going to outscore stuff in the right way. And we've got a 4-0 trashing of Christensen here, and he's the man responsible for it. And into double figures already. He's surely top scorer in the league by now. So there we have it. Still only a point clear at the top as Mulder actually are starting to really pick up some pace now. And we are going to still regret those drop points earlier. But the fact is, 14 points from six games so far. The goal differences are actually in line with a title winning type of side again. Finally, for probably the first time in this save. Uh, minus 18 for Frederick that is terrifying be bad for them but to have a striker like this uh, this is a really good sign for us and i think we've done the right thing by bringing him in and he's just giving us that little bit extra now teams are just not being able to handle it it seems like he's taking his chances differently he's now in different positions and just able to score all sorts of opportunities and that's really cool there's a lot of bodies here we've got to be careful we don't commit a foul we're about to aren't we yes <laughs> Noah Jean Holm from the spot against Johansson and Johansson saves it what a god tag sets delivery once Johansson saves it again. Tagsek delivers it a third time. Oh, <laughs> literally three efforts at goal there. And eventually one of them goes in. Uh, saves the penalty, saves the corner, can't save the third one. This is not looking like a good afternoon for us so far. Please go ball in. Johansson's missed it as well. And now it's 2-0. Rikic now. Can he put this on Velez's head? Yes, he can. Roberto Velez stepping in today into that other spot. And we score from a corner. Tromsa one, Rosenborg two. What's Velez doing? Limata. Oh my goodness me, what a hit. Otso, literally the moment we get back into it, Rosenborg grab a third goal here. And well, this is going to be a humdinger of a second half. Uh, Noah now clips it up. Miss Odi, it's four. <sighs> All that hard work we've had lately. And we've only conceded in like two, one game or two now this season, but we've had four ship past us today. We've come back late on before, but this would be a new one for us, I must say. Riedingen, Vidigera, round the side for Kawamoto, and it's 4-2. Well, we couldn't quite do it. Tromsa two, Rosenborg four. Uh... I mean, we were we were kind of dead and buried after t literally 20 minutes in this one, uh, after giving up those goals. Got our chance to get back into it, but then immediately balls it up again. Rosenberg were just better than us here, really. Uh, we still, we came back into the match a little bit towards the end. And maybe 4-2 is a tiny bit harsh, but honestly, um, it's nice to see Kawamoto still score, but it wasn't really happening for us. The penalty miss as well, like we, it just wasn't our day and we didn't play well enough either. But it is days like today when you regret not winning those games that we should be winning against the teams like uh, Storms except down the bottom because we now slip down to third in the league and it is very, very tight towards the top and we've got to keep the pressure on and... Uh it's one game, and Kawamoto still scored. We're not going to have many games like this this season, I don't suspect. So as long as we can get back on the wagon quickly, I'm not too worried. So we did get through in the cup. Just about. Just the 1-0 with a 91st minute penalty. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. In fact, not only is it clear, but Hegeberst through for Kongsvinger. And, well, that's obviously going to go in, isn't it? Because, yeah. Orna Hegeber, a guy I looked at a couple of seasons ago as a striker for us. Well, of course he scored against us. I don't know what the defender was doing, and it's 1-0 to Kongsvinger. This has all the hallmarks of that being like their only chance of the match now. So like as Indistad puts it wide. Well, it's happened again. Uh, chances were there, didn't take them. Opponents score their only opportunity, and we uh, we lose at home against Kongsvinger. But they'll take a load in one game, but then they just can't seem to... None of them have consistency issues too, which is kind of weird. We don't really have any players with bad consistency, which is actually surprising for once. And yet... We just seem to be so inconsistent. Okay, so we're out the cup. Uh, still didn't lose, though, technically on penalties. But again, this game was ridiculous. Uh, there's no way we should have been even close to being involved in this match. And if it wasn't for a 95th minute equaliser from Starbeck, we would have won. I played a totally rotated side. Ali isn't even a striker. Like, I don't think he's even... He was the only guy we could put in there with, while resting the rest of the team. And somehow we score four goals whilst doing that. Um, it's mad. I just don't understand how the worst quality of... And this was a good strength Starbeck team. As far as I can tell, this was their first team. Um, really odd, but that we are out of the cup, but still on penalties. So the unbeaten streak does technically continue somehow, but we are out. So less fixtures for the rest of the season, I suppose, is one thing to deal with. Might allow us to concentrate on the league a bit more, but uh, I don't know. So here we are at this point in the season. I actually think we're doing okay. Uh, we seem to be hitting our marks for the most part on goal scored. Still a tiny bit under, but not too bad. Uh, against the, one of the best defences in the league, which is really good, albeit with some weirdness lately. Uh, but there's very little you can do about it in games like the Kongsvinger one, sadly. Uh, and then points-wise, we're kind of on the mark, but a little bit less than everyone around us too. So there is that as a factor. We're definitely... Something feels better than previous seasons, and maybe it is just a bit of a blip, but results like Kongsvinger, Storm's Gazette, those kind of games are not acceptable. Uh, Rosenborg, they outplayed us. They deserve to win that game. It is what it is, but it's just all those other ones we've dropped. That 
that's that's the problem, really. Because we come into today, fourth in the league, away at Volarenga. Uh, Starbuck lead the league currently with 17 points. Uh, Mulder up there as well, though they've dropped some weird points this season too. It's definitely not by any means gone, but we've gone from being in a position of having 14 points from six games and looking fantastic to now suddenly back-to-back -back league defeats. And you're like, oh, this could make a third league defeat if we were to balls it up here against Volarenga. And then the problems start to mount up and you'd sort of left scratch in your head because, you know, Kawamoto is banging goals in left and right. 11 already this season. He's doing brilliantly. It's just other areas. Rakic should have had two. Bamba should have at least three already. I'm starting to think that you could put Mbappe in that central midfield role and he would still miss every chance. It's mental. Whoever plays there just seems to not be able to score. But anyway, we must get ourselves back on track today. Indistan and Kawamoto, we swap those two over. Bamba and Jonsson. Uh, Keeper has kind of fallen out of the pecking order a little bit lately on account of his horrendous attitude. Uh, and that might be a factor. I might even bring him back in today, honestly, for Yon uh, for Jonsson, just to see if Kipre can actually, because we were good when he was in the team, but he has a dreadful attitude. Uh, so the defensive line will obviously switch around a little bit as well. Um, we're still lacking Nicholas Dida, sadly, so it could still end up being Kornich and uh, Borsch Grevink again. I think I might try reading him today and bring Borsch Grevink off the bench if we need to. Dida still not back fit yet, sadly. Broke his, got like a torn wrist ligament and he was out for six weeks and still is out, obviously. But we just need to get back to winning. Uh, and this is going to be a tough one, a tough ask, because we've got three straight league away games now. This could literally mud us, honestly, uh, if we don't start to pick our form up a little bit now. I mean, like 11 goals for Kawamoto. He's done exactly what I wanted from him, but he's done it in very specific matches. <laughs> he scored eight of those in two games. Now, obviously, I'd like to believe that this could even itself out of every full season. But how many times have we said that since we joined this club when we keep getting these little patches and it just never seems to ever even out? But maybe this is the year. Kawamoto, and we do look better overall, and it is still early days this year. We just need to go on a good run, get some get some wins back. Kawamoto, it's a tough ask for him to shoot. Oh, it's a good effort on his left foot. Well saved. So all of our rivals are currently winning, which is very bad news. And we need to at least, we're going to have to win just to keep the gap the same. And that's a problem, really. And we were hoping to make up some ground potentially today, but not, apparently not. Borsch Grevink, long way to go though still. Rakic, saved again. It's a long way out. I don't think Borsch Grevink is going to go for goal from here. Oh, he has. Oh, and a good tip over. Yeah, so this is a situation we found ourselves in a few times last season where we play really well and then we'd have a defeat out of nowhere that we maybe deserved or didn't deserve. And then we would just get stuck in this rut where we would then play well and then lose and then start to not even play that well. And we've got to buck our ideas up a bit because we've been crap. Okay, now I'm now I'm liking what I'm seeing. Rakic! Saved again. But this is a good start. Oh my God, Blad is completely open. Oh, it's saved again. Oh, I don't know if that was it. Jonsson. Rakic. Oh, this is going to end up with a... Tri dribbly shot out of nowhere, isn't it? Rakic! And it's saved again by the goalkeeper. Clipping it long. One by Gomez. Come on. Not another one of these games. Please. I beg of you. Score a goal. Kawamoto. Bodies back inside. One of them is Bamba. And in this turn! I've officially given up. I... Uh... My brain is actually broken. That was a huge opportunity for us to get back into the battle again. And we've just fluffed yet more opportunities. And I might just start uploading Rocket League. Well, what started out as a very positive start to the season. Winning the Super Cup. Good wins. So solid start. Looking on pace to be decent, really. Uh, showing no real signs of trouble. Uh, with a poor performance, kind of ruined a little bit of confidence in there. But we then got a cup win that bounced us back. Just barely. Bear in mind. You saw the stats for that game. Then we lose a home to Kongsvinger. Somehow. Uh, then we lose the, losing the cup here. And I don't know how we managed to score four goals in this game. We always seem to use them in useless times. And then this one against Volarenga. Better side, don't win. Uh, story of the season. Next time we come back and everything will just be fine. Just be fine. But we've now not won in three league matches and can't seem to score a goal. <laughs> so that's good. Except when we don't need to. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, and I hope you have, just out of a more Schadenfreudic standpoint, then drop a like. That'd be lovely. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be gorgeous too. I stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. So go follow that too. And I'll see you guys very soon for more of this absolute shenanigans. I'll see you soon. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.